Jai Shri Mataji, everyone. Let us humbly bow down, requesting permission for this morning's meditation. Let's raise our kundalinis, put ourselves in a bandha and settle down to meditation. Keeping our attention on the sahasra, just checking the vibrations on our hands.
Father, I surrender my ego and my superego and all the negative qualities that stem from them within me at your lotus feet so that Sri Ganesha can crown our Agya Chakra with his presence. Mother, I surrender at your lotus feet. Shri Mataji, you who are Shri Vichara Shaitilya, please relax, please dissolve all my thoughts. Please establish your presence on my Agya Chakra. Mother, I forgive everyone. I forgive myself. Mother, please forgive me. Let's put our right hand across our agyas. Do hum sham for a few minutes to cleanse our agyas.
So yesterday was a nice day for all of us. And I said something. To get into tight corner so that they can get out. So yesterday was a nice day for all of us and I said something of a different level. We've been talking all the time about the mundane things and these things sometimes are very, what's it? It's all right. Uh, are of so much importance, we think. But when I talked to you yesterday, I hope you all realized that we have to now jump into another realm of a subtler understanding of Sahaja Yoga. First we were worried about our families, our children, our households, then our marriages, one after another, all these questions came up. And we were concerned about all these things, little, little things. Then we also got concerned about the ashrams which we were in, the problems of the ashram, what we have been doing, how we have been facing the problems, how people are creating problems. That's how our humanity started, acquiring a subtler understanding. And then we also realized that we are blessed by God, that there's something great that is always looking after us, some higher force, some special attention is there about us. This is what we realized. Today I was explaining how it happens, that how we realize that God is helping us. Any problem is an effect of some sort of a cause, it's a great problem. Like Mona wrote a letter that she was driving in a motorway and the car went out of control and the brake would not act. And there was a car coming from the right, car coming from the left, cars going in front and behind and she felt that they will be finished. Two of them were traveling to surgeries. So the cause was the car or the brake or whatever it was, mechanism, and the effect was all the problem. So now how to overcome that problem? Supposing you try to neutralize the effect, you cannot because cause is still there. You try to improve the cause, it doesn't work out. Then what you do? So the easiest thing is to cross the cause, to ascend over, to go beyond the cause. So the cause does not exist for you, so the effect does not exist. As long as the cause exists in your attention, the effect will be so what did she do? She just prayed to me, just thought of me, that mother now is my last chance. That's all. So the cause disappeared. Because you go beyond it. And the effect also disappeared. And she was surprised. So you must ascend away from the now a problem, 
a life is like this, my husband like this, my family life is like this, uh, Sahaja Yogis are like this, all kinds of things are there. It's a different. Now what's the cause? It's such and such cause. All right. Now what, how do you get negation of the cause? Surrender. You have, you have the right to do that. You have a knack to do it. You can do it. You are capable of it. You are entitled to do it. But you don't do it, you forget. You just forget. If you surrender at that cause, effects will go away. But that is the thing at that time to remember that you have to ascend, to go beyond the cause is the best way to get results. So I've been playing with you. You had causes to say, Oh mother, this is the problem, I have no job, no, I have a job, then the job is to be had, then the wife is not there, she must have a wife, and the wife has a problem, and she's to be divorced, and that is that, and this is that. Then I'm like that, I'm very bad, because there's a bhut in me. So the bhut is the cause. And I'm behaving like this because there's a bhut in me. That's also a scapegoat, I think. So first you go beyond that, say, what is bhut? Who is bhut? I know my mother. And mother, you look after this bhut of mine. That's all. But for that an emergency has to come to you, otherwise you just don't live that power. When you are in an emergent condition, then it works out faster. When it is not emergency, it is half hearted like Muna's condition. There was another case where a journalist was traveling from, uh, I think, Lonaula or something, and his, uh, his brakes broke down and he was with another journalist. So both of them were coming. This another journalist told me. The another one was surgery. So he found his brakes are not working and he found his uh, car is going, in front there's a big truck coming up and another truck coming from behind. And there was no way for him to turn or to get out of it and his brakes were on. That was the emergency, such an emergency that developed into his mind that, oh God, now the last moment has come. Now I'm finished, there's a, car, a truck coming from there and another truck and within a split of a second he was to be finished. Then he just closed his eyes and he told his friend, think of mother, that's all. And then what he found? That he was nicely crawling on the road and the trucks were left behind and the brake was good. But that emergency has to come. Human beings are such that unless and until they are put into tight corners, they never do that. Once they are in a tight corner, then they do. That is the reason why people try to take ascetic life. Because if you are an ascetic, then you are in a tight corner. They go to Gobi Desert to create that emergency within you. So then you think of God. But that's too late to go to Gobi Desert. They create problems for them to get into tight corners so that they can get out. But for Sahaja Yogi, if they are wise, they need not have. But how do we achieve it otherwise without any getting tired? Only way is meditation. Everybody must meditate is the point. If you do not meditate, you can continue for a while. You may be all right for a while, for two, three months, maybe two years, but then you drop. Many people think, oh, what's the need to meditate? You see, it's all right. If you don't meditate, it doesn't matter. It's not true. Because in meditate only, meditation only you grow. In emergency you suddenly grow, no doubt. I mean, you just, like a jack in the box, just come up with a spring. But if you have to have a continuous growth, 
then you must meditate, allow the thought, after thoughts coming, and then allow them to subside because you rise into the state of thoughtless awareness and in that thoughtless awareness you grow and you grow in your detachment to the cause of all the effects. If there is no cause, there is no effect. But this is the problem with us, is that we do not meditate normally. Only when it comes to absolute last point, now you have to fall in the well, then we think of it. Maybe at that moment you are helped, but you don't grow. Growth can only come if you wait. That is one very important part, is complete help to people who meditate. In the normal life, how do we grow? If we have no oxygen, we cannot grow. We have to have sufficient oxygen, we have to have sufficient food, we have to have all these things. But in spirituality you grow through meditation. There's no way out. Those who think they can grow are bumptious. Actually bumptious people. Because they can talk a lot about surgery. I've seen people who talk too much about surgery. They can give big lectures, this, that, but have no vibrations at all. They can't do any work for surgery. They are not collective, they have no cells to be collective. All kinds of problems. But the growth is to be achieved through meditation. That is one part. That is, we can say, is the worship, is the puja. Then you don't have to give up anything, you just become detached. Detached from the cause itself. That's one point. Second is that, this I would say will take you to the subtler side of your emotional bindings, because Emotional binding has given you certain identification, you are a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim or this and that, or a British or any kind of a, a race, whatever you have to call it. All those things will drop out because you will be a detached person. So these emotional bindings is my brother, he is my sister, I am worried about my wife, I am worried about my child. All these emotional bindings which make you a smaller personality will drop out and you will have one emotional binding is that I am growing in my compassion. Compassion is active. My compassion is effective. My compassion is alert. My compassion gives me discretion. I'm a yogi. And secondly, you read about Sahaja Yoga, you know about Sahaja Yoga, you, you know the technique of Sahaja Yoga, you raise your Kundalini, you clean your chakras, try to understand about mantras, you master your mantras, you master your deities, you please them. All these things when they are done properly, then your mental bindings will drop. Those who think they are great scientists, they will know that this is no science. The science of God's technique is much more. Those who think they are overread, well-read people when they read about Sajjuna, and work it out on themselves and see for themselves and on others. They will know that whatever they have read is all stupid, has no meaning, is empty. And that's how a kind of an emptiness will come. Emptiness of ego. Because you see that knowledge is so great, like 
Newton said that knowledge is like an ocean and I'm like a little child uh, collecting some pebbles at its shore. What an understanding. So that emptiness comes in and then the real knowledge starts coming. The identification with real knowledge comes. When you talk, when you talk, that talk has an effect. That's a mantra. You just don't jabber. Oh, I know Sahaja Yoga. I've been in Sahaja Yoga for 15 years, good for nothing. You may be there for 100 years, but you may remain the donkey as donkey is. Absolutely. But you may remain there only for one year and you may become from a donkey a human being and a yogi too. But that is what we have to, first of all, decondition ourselves by attaching ourselves emotionally to Mother. I mean, you have an advantage over many other yogis of the world who came for things that nothing to look for. They knew of a primordial mother, they knew about this, but they had no form. You have a form. You are very fortunate and lucky people, you have a form. It's easy to adore a form than to adore something abstract in the air, you see. Absolute consciousness, how do you adore it, where do you catch it? But that attachment doesn't mean in any way that you have to give me anything. What do you give me? Nothing. But detachment from the cause. And this works out. You have seen it in your life that you also say that it works out, but that's how it worked out. What is bandha? It's nothing. But you are attaching yourself to your mother. You're just telephoning to her. This is a telephone going to your mind. That's all. You know, I also play with you, I also say, all right, I'm giving you a bandha. Okay. I'm giving bandha to myself. It's a telephone call, just a telephone call. But the faith has developed now that here. This is the real faith, where you get completely detached in your emotional thing. It's just, my mother, all right, just give her a bandha, finish it. My father, give him a bandha. My brother, give him a bandha. What are you doing? Bandha. What are you doing? You are putting them in the, in the bonds of your mother. But you are not conscious that you are doing that. You are just binding them with the love of your mother which is flowing through your mind. What are these vibrations? Is your mother's love? You've got it. It is flowing through you, but what about your love for your mother? And that is what I find that at the time when there is complete emergency, that surrender comes. And it works. So there's no need to create any emergencies. You must slow and steadily work it out. And it will build up. By itself, it will. You have that power, I assure you. But meditation. Sit in meditation.
Mother, please teach me to be detached from the negativity within me. Please dissolve all my emotional bindings and my mental bindings. Mother, I surrender all the causes within me and without that are hindering my ascent. Mother, let the fragrance of my innocence and my spirit fill my being with joy, enlighten my brain, and guide my path to achieve complete realization. Sortless and doubtless awareness. Mother, let me grow in my compassion. I humbly surrender at your lotus feet. Please let me be drenched in your love. Ah. 
Let's put our hands together and humbly thank Sri Mataji for the opportunity of this morning's meditation. Thank you for the blessings and the gift of Sahaja Yoga to humanity, Sri Mataji. Let's raise our kundalini and put ourselves in a bandhan. Thank you everyone for your vibrational presence. Have a beautiful day, Jai Sri Mataji.
find a path that never is broken through the troubled days. You who are within me and you who are in love, you are Mother Nature, you are nature's call. You who have this secret, the love of all mankind. Please release this stormy change which binds us with our own mind. You are my sunshine and you are my light. You are the full moon in this darkest night. Oh, lift this veil from my eyes and show me the way to find my path and there.